beer review, a little bit of a beer chat. I'm going to actually look at two beers from the same brewery, which is going to be from Kona. So thanks to you guys actually uh, joining in here on the chat, those that happen to pop in. And if nobody pops in, well then, I'll still talk about the beers anyway. So Saturday night, we're to the weekend. People kind of been uh, confined in certain areas. Hopefully, if you weren't confined, you found some good activity to do. Maybe you were out doing some things around town or... I don't think you really do too much besides go to some of the stores, but maybe you took a walk, exercise, you know, did something, or maybe you went a different route. Maybe you uh, did something to better yourself. Maybe you read a book or you worked on a project. All kinds of things you could be doing. But anyway, we're not doing the uh, question thing tonight because I know Todd and Shannon were tied up with some other stuff. So I figured why not go live and just talk about some beers. And tonight I'm going to look at two both from Kona Brewing. What is happening? Dave, cheers, my friend. Welcome. Good to see you. Thanks for subscribing as well. I'm definitely check, going to check out your stuff too, my friend. But I'm going to look at Kona Brewing, and this is their Castaway. It is their IPA India Pale Ale, or I should say one of them there. Get my camera to focus in here in a second. There we go. So there's a Castaway India Pale Ale. And then I'm going to take a look at the uh, Kua Bay, also from Kona. And we'll let the camera get acclimated here. It's kind of funny how long this thing takes. Try to get a little closer for you guys so you can see that there. And once I switch it to the other camera, it'll come in a little clear there. But there's the Kua Bay India Pale Ale, also from Kona. And I picked up a variety pack the other day because I just wanted to have something easy drinking. Usually when I do the gaming channel as well, I drink a few beers, but I'm not trying to do any reviews. So I need to have some other stuff on hand that I'm too worried about. And this was something I saw there. There were two other ones in there, Longboard and something else that I had not reviewed. So I'll have those reviews upcoming as well. And figure why not just uh, grab those beers, take a look at them. And uh, Dave's Haunted Adventures, cheers back to you, my friend. If you guys haven't checked out Dave, make sure you check him out as well. So let's go ahead and I'm going to switch over to the uh, beer review cam down here. And get those, so you can see those down in the bottom corner. So let's see, first I have the Castaway India Pale Ale. This one here. Uh, check the ABV. Six percent ABV on this one, and anything to note on here? Hawaiians crossing the channel between Ohawa or Hawaii and Malaki or Balakai. Damn, I can't read this thing. It's so small. Face a perilous journey. Our castaway IPA is inspired by the brave island explorers. Smooth yet spirited brew, it is refreshing as the wind in your face when you set sail for adventure. So both of these were packaged uh, since January 27th. So we're about two months out. Let's go ahead and uh, get it into a glass. And of course for this one, I'm just gonna use the IPA glasses here. Got a little bit left in that one too. So there you go. Now with Kona, some people actually think of them as a craft beer, but technically by definition, they are not a craft beer because of the ownership. They don't fit the craft beer definition by those that follow beer. That being said, they still make some decent stuff from time to time. I usually call a lot of these beers kind of crafty because what else are you gonna do with them? They still have the craft quality, even though they don't fit that definition of uh, craft beer. We got a nice two to three finger head on the top. Nice clarity, which is common with a lot of the beers like this when they start falling into the hands of some of the uh, more crafty type breweries and those that filter before they hit the uh, can or bottle. You can see the carbonation really rising up nicely. Some good bubble action taking place. You get a sense of the fruitiness with this one. Again, a little bit of a grapefruit. A little bit of an orange tangerine. 
Got a little bit of a pininess in there as well. A little bit of a, a grassy type note too. But kind of what I would expect taste wise. Get a good amount of bitter in play. You can really feel in the throat area, the hoppiness of the beer. You get in the mouth a little bit more of that grapefruit type feel from the flavor. Does hit the cheeks nicely. A little bit of an astringency. Nice medium body on the beer. Feel a little bit of that carbonation on the tongue. One thing that I sometimes note about some of the beers like this, I get a little bit of a, almost like a bacon soda type quality on the uh, back end on the finish. And usually I think that just goes to kind of that citrusy type feel. Again, something like a grapefruit. But it does hit the tongue very strongly. It does have a refreshing quality to it. No problem putting down pretty much half the glass already. And you still have so many lovely bubbles taking place. So when you sit there at a bar and you're looking at a beer like this, it's definitely what you expect to see, some of that action. So you can really see that really going up nicely to what's left of the head. So yeah, not too uh, disappointed with this one. It doesn't really stand out, but it does what it's supposed to do. But again, that is the Castaway. So now, let's take a look at the uh, Kua Bay India Pale Ale. This one here actually comes in at 7.3% ABV. So the Kua Bay is a little bit bigger. Uh, on the notes, Kua Bay on the Big Island is as picture perfect as it gets. Bright turquoise waves carry you in, in towards the white and sand beach. So grab your beach gear and our Kua Bay IPA with this piney hoppiness and subtle caramel malt. It's a smooth, crisp finish to your day. So this also should have a little bit of a smoothness there. And also, uh, this one's kind of bragging a little bit more on the caramel type flavor. Before I try that one, I'm gonna drink a little bit of water, clear the palate. I stay hydrated. Nothing wrong with that, Dave. It happens to us all once in a while. Dave said he got so wasted last night. <laughs> well, if you remember it, then you weren't too wasted. <laughs> it's the ones you can't remember you have to worry about. All right, so let's crack this baby open. That one into the glass here, leave a little as well until I drink this down. So again, you got a nice look on here. You've got a nice, a little bit darker, I think, orange. Let me see. You got, yeah, you got a little bit more darker orange on the second one here. This is the first one right here. You can see the difference in the tones. This one also has the nice carbonation taking place. Again, you got that great bubble action inside. Both of these definitely filtered before they went to the uh, bottle. Nice foaminess on the head. And I always like to get about a two to three finger head. Reason being, that actually opens up the aromas. Also releases the proteins and the gases so that you're not feeling too bloated. So you can actually want to have something to get more of that floral type note out or things like that. That's why you want to get like a head on the beer. Usually you want to get like maybe a one to two, but the bigger the head, the more. If you go overseas, from what I've been told from people over there, plus some of the bars, things I've read about, you know, they'll pour a beer for a good amount of time. It may take like a minute to have the beer poured because they pour straight down the middle and let it settle and pour straight down so they can release a lot of that. That's why they probably can drink so many beers in a day. Uh, yeah, so Dave, the Instagram is Rod J Beer Ventures as well. So I'm on there too. 
aroma wise. Now I will say I'm not getting the aroma coming out as strongly on this one as I did on the first one. Taste wise, I do get a little bit of that grapefruit type feel. I do get the pininess, but I get, do get the sweetness from the malt so that it does have that caramel tone mentioned on the label. And when you kick up the ABV on beers, a lot of times what you're doing is you're raising that malt content and that's gonna give a little bit more of a sweetness there. Seems to be what took place on this one. This one doesn't hang in the cheeks as much as the other one does, but it's, it's smoother, it's more refined when you actually taste this one in comparison. It's not as bitter as the lower ABV one. Again, bringing up the malt to actually drop down some of the bitterness and how the taste actually uh, receives everything. Nice feel of the carbonation on the tongue. I'll say on the back end, I mentioned on the first one how I got a little bit of that bacon soda type feel. This one doesn't really have that on it. Um, you get a nice scratchiness in the throat. This one again is a nice medium body type beer. The first one is a little bit more refreshing, but this is just a lot more smoother. This is one I would definitely to kick back more and just uh, chill with. It's like both of these can be used if you were pairing them up with the food, for instance, say you were having a hamburger, both of these could fit like with a hamburger. But if it was something like the second one here, which is the Kua Bay, if I was having something like say ribs and some of that sauce coming off of it, I would prefer something like this versus the other one. Putting that caramel together with some of that, if you're having the barbecue and the ribs, that sweetness. I think this won't perform a little bit better than that one. Uh, but if I was having something like a ahi salad or something like that, I would actually prefer this one. I would prefer the uh, Castaway. I think that refreshing quality would go a little bit better in that regard. So there are slight differences between the two. Um, you can definitely tell that, at least I can, in the taste. It's kind of funny. Sometimes when you see breweries make the same type of styles, it's those little subtle things that make a difference between them. And uh, you can definitely pick that out here. But still, overall, a pretty decent beer. If I had to choose between the two of the ones that I would prefer more or higher, so to speak, or when I go to my untapped, if you're an untapped, you could also follow me there. I would actually place, for me, the Cuba Bay a little bit higher than the Castaway. The, Q, the uh, Castaway, when I go to put that into my untapped, I'm looking more like around a 3.5 with that one. With the Cuba Bay, I'm looking more to 3.75. Again, that one doesn't knock me back as well either, but it does bring a little bit more to the table, and I'm more, for what I'm looking for, favorable to. I like how the nice smoothness comes off. It kind of really goes well when you're actually sitting there consuming it. It makes, for me, it's a higher enjoyment factor to sit back and uh, actually drink it as it goes down. What's up, Ron? Good to see you, my friend. Yeah, I still gotta do the hams video, by the way. I just haven't picked up the hams because I've got one store that actually has hams that I have not been out there yet with all the Corona stuff going on. So I'm gonna still do the hams. I got it down to do the hams video. But uh, hams with ribs actually wouldn't be bad, having an adjunct lager like that. And again, I've had hams before on draft and bars, and uh, it actually is surprisingly better than I thought it was going to be. As far as adjunct lagers, it's actually one of the ones I preferred more than some of the other ones that are out there. So it's a decent beer. But if you happen to see the Kona variety pack right now, this is actually the ones they actually have out there right now. And uh, the other one I have is a golden ale. And the other one I believe is um, a type of lager. It might be an American light lager or something like that. But 
I'll do the videos on those as well. But I would definitely say uh, they're worth to pick up. Um, if you just want something of how to be that classic style, not be anything over the top. You're not trying to get in it for the juiciness or the fruitiness of some of the ones being done nowadays. And you just want kind of a nice chill with IPA or two. Yeah, the variety pack seems to work. Uh, Ron said $14.99, a 30-pack. Yeah, we're somewhere around that here with the hams as well. Although occasionally, some of our places could have it discounted to move them off the shelves and everything. We had a few places um, that I put some stuff on sale recently. If you guys ever check out Kentucky Brew Review, they came up a few weeks ago when we had the beer fest before the whole coronavirus thing really took hold. And they went out to Jungle Gems, and they had, they were they were shocked. They saw like two for a dollar of like Red Four Locos, like the twenty five or twenty four ounce can, whatever. But a lot of my places around here, they always kind of do those deals. I'm even thinking a fifty cent a can of Four Locos still isn't worth it though. I will say with this one also, the Castaway. Yeah, that I do like that you can get the aroma a little bit more out of the glass versus the other one. I don't know why the other one does not have as strong of the aroma. Because I would think it's a little bit more maltier. They have a little bit more coming out, but... Clearly not getting that versus the uh, the Castaway. I mean, it comes out rather easily. It's kind of interesting. Well, thanks, Ron. I appreciate that, my friend. Just wanted to throw something up here for Saturday night and see how you guys are all doing. And uh, Ron or Dave, if you guys are drinking on anything, let me know what you guys are drinking on. Although Dave may be taking the night off after last night <laughs> since, he, since he got so ripped. Now, if you guys see these out there as six packs and you want to try them, then if you're a bitter, more of a bitter type fan, I would say go with the Castaway. If you're more of a smoother or more a little bit of a maltier type feel on how you like your IPAs, then I would say go with the Cuba Bay for sure. But that's all really on these two beers, so. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Just want to get in here and do a nice one and uh, see what was all going on out there in the beer world. And appreciate you guys for swinging by. Swing back to the other cam. And today got a little bit more crazy, but tomorrow if I get some guys together, maybe we'll do like a live stream in the afternoon or something. See who might be around to try to do something along those lines and uh, maybe do a beer show then. I'm going to go ahead and get off of here. Thanks for all you that tuned in. Thanks to you, Dave. Thanks to you, Ron. Thanks to all you that watch on the replay. And I will look forward to catching up with you guys soon. Keep drinking those good craft beers. Remember, there's always time. Get your beer on. <laughs>